Welcome to the Changes Since Last Firm, or CSLF, GIS tutorial. This presentation provides details about what the CSLF dataset is and how it can be used along with local data to educate and empower communities to mitigate flood risks. Most communities are familiar with using flood insurance rate maps, or flood maps, to guide sound floodplain management decisions. The Federal Emergency Management Agency, or FEMA, also created flood risk products to be used alongside regulatory products like firms. Flood risk products are non-regulatory, ready-made sources of additional information that go beyond the basic flood hazard information on the firm and provide more extensive and more user-friendly information. Flood risk products can help communities make better and more effective mitigation decisions. Flood risk products include the flood risk database, which stores the changes since last firm, water surface elevation grids, flood depth grids. It may also store the percent annual chance grid, percent 30 year chance grid, flood risk assessment, and areas of mitigation interest. A flood risk map and a flood risk report will often accompany the database. The CSLF dataset can help community leaders, planners, and other municipal staff understand and show where flood risk has changed since the last study on the 1% and the 0.2% chance event. It identifies areas where flood risk could continue to change and help community leaders, planners, and other municipal staff understand which areas are now at greater or may have reduced risk. With this information, community officials can also educate newly impacted residents and business owners about steps they can take to minimize their risk from this natural hazard. These zones are important for local floodplain managers and building officials to provide where floodplain regulations and standards will apply once the new maps are available. Zone BE, Zone AE with floodway, Zones AE, AO, and AH, Zones A99 and AR, Zones V and A are all areas that require flood insurance. This example shows various polygons with associated structures interacting with the CSLF. Structure A was and continues to be located entirely in zone AE. Structure B was and continues to be located partially in zone AE. Structure C was previously located partially in a floodway. Now it is located out of the floodway, but still entirely within zone AE. Structure D was previously located entirely in zone AE. Now it is located in zone AE and a floodway. Structure E was previously located in unshaded zone X. Now it is located partially in shaded zone X or the 0.2% chance. Structure F was previously located partially in shaded zone X or the 0.2% chance. Now it is located partially in zone AE. Structure G was previously located partially in the shaded zone X or 0.2% chance. Now it is located partially in zone AE. The following tutorial outlines steps in ArcMap to perform simple spatial analysis using the CSLF dataset. Each spatial layer in the flood risk database is described in detail by accessing FEMA's Flood Risk Database Technical References. This tutorial utilizes the following layers from the Flood Risk Database. The CSLF AR, showing the changes since last firm areas. Here is a snapshot of what each attribute in the SCSLF AR layer represents. Open ArcMap and use the Add Data button dropdown to add a simple base map layer to give the CSLF some spatial context.
Use the Add Data function again and navigate to the Flood Risk Database. Inside the FRD spatial layers, select the SCSLF AR shapefile and click Add. In the list of added layers, right click on the SCSLF AR and select Properties. Navigate to the Definition Query tab in the Query Builder box. Enter the field name SFHACHG and set it equal to capital I, then click OK. This will display only the areas where the 1% flood risk has increased with new firms. Please note that floodway and non-special flood hazard areas and changes are available under the field floodway change and non-SFHA change and can be queried similarly. Use the add data function again to add local point or polygon data, such as parcels, address points, parcel borders, or building footprints. These data, if available, are often distributed by local or state GIS offices. Flood risk products are much more powerful communication tools when they are used together with local data. Incorporating local data can personalize flood risk and help stakeholders to better understand how floods may affect their communities in ways that are meaningful to them. Other locally specific data sets may include land record information, property values, location of critical facilities, zoning and land use information, and building codes. Use the selection tab across the top and click select by location. Set the local data as the target layer and set the source layer to SCSLF AR. Set the spatial selection method as intersect the source layer feature. Click OK or apply. And this function will select buildings or address points that intersect the new SFHA or SFHA increase. Buildings or parcels affected by the increase in flood risk will be highlighted. This selection may also include parcels that were already half in or half out of the affected floodplain. Right click the building footprint, parcel, or address data set you're using and select open the attribute table. From the attribute table, export selected records and save the table as a DBF which can be opened in Microsoft Excel. Depending on the available attributes, this export can then be used to create a contact list for mailing of information to affected property owners. This exercise can prepare communities with the best available data and ensure residents are more informed of map change outcomes. Municipalities can use these maps to clearly communicate insurance and risk implications to homeowners and to discuss and answer questions about pending changes to the flood maps. As previously mentioned, flood risk products were developed to be used alongside regulatory products like firms to help guide those tough conversations. Many of the flood risk products help stakeholders visualize their flood risks in a way that lines on the firm cannot, making flood risk products a powerful communication tool. The following provides more resources to learn more about flood risk products. Please use these web pages for printable flood risk product fact sheets, Colorado's resiliency plan throughout the state, FEMA specific resources, other uses for a base flood elevation, and what exactly is meant by the term 100 year flood. A geographic information system known as GIS 
is a powerful tool for visualization and data analysis. If you're interested in trying GIS, check out these resources. Once you have an ArcGIS platform, contact your community for a copy of the Flood Risk Database and a Flood Risk Product Map Package. For additional information, please contact representatives from the Colorado Water Conservation Board.